Ernest Rutherford was a brilliant experimental physicist and one of the founders of nuclear physics. He was born in 1871 in Brightwater, New Zealand, into a family of pioneer stock who'd emigrated from Britain less than 30 years earlier. Although he was a good all-round scholar at school, Rutherford showed no real bias to science. In 1890, he entered Canterbury College at Christchurch where his scientific ability became apparent and he graduated with first-class degrees in both science and mathematics. He continued at Christchurch doing research and developed a detector for radio waves which depended on the magnetization of iron. In 1894, a scholarship was offered by Cambridge University to a postgraduate student in New Zealand and Rutherford won it. Borrowing the money for his boat fare, he left his family for England in 1895. At Cambridge, J.J. Thompson was professor at the famous Cavendish Laboratory and was at this time working on experiments into gases which conduct after exposure to the recently discovered X-rays. Shortly after Rutherford joined Thompson in this work, the discovery of radioactivity was announced by Henri Becquerel in Paris. In 1897, Thompson announced his proof of the existence of the electron but Rutherford was already working on experiments on gases which conduct after exposure to radioactivity. During this year, he noted many of the properties of radioactivity and became acquainted with the experimental methods in this new science. In 1898, Rutherford applied for a research professorship at McGill University in Montreal. Still only 27, Rutherford became a professor there and began his first great period of scientific discovery. In 1901, the English chemist Frederick Soddy helped Rutherford with his work on radioactivity, and within about a year, they'd realized that a radioactive atom changes to a different atom on emission of radiation. Together, they published papers on the cause and nature of radioactivity and on the spontaneous transformation theory of radioactivity. Rutherford also worked on alpha particles and published a general paper on radioactive change in 1903. In 1904 his first book Radioactivity was published. Within five years Rutherford with the help of Soddy had solved many problems of the new subject of radioactivity had realized that radioactive atoms change spontaneously into other atoms and had defined the idea of isotopes. In 1906, the chair at Manchester University was offered to Rutherford by the professor then holding it, who promised to retire if Rutherford would accept. This he did, and in 1907, he moved to Manchester's new, well-equipped laboratories now began his second period of discovery, probably the greatest and certainly the happiest of his life. In 1908, Rutherford received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his work on radioactivity, but was now investigating the properties of alpha particles with the help of some of his 15 research students. A series of experiments led him to believe that alpha particles were in fact helium atoms and to prove this in 1909 he performed a simple and clever experiment. A substance, radon, which emitted alpha particles was placed outside a closed evacuated tube having metal electrodes at each end. After a few days high voltage was applied between the electrodes and the spectrum of the electric discharge which took place clearly proved the existence of helium atoms in the tube. The alpha particles must have traveled through the walls of the tube and collected and the alpha particles must be helium atoms. In fact we now know that alpha particles are helium nuclei. In 1911, Rutherford proposed his most revolutionary idea concerning the existence of the atomic nucleus. Up to this time, the atom was thought of as being a positively charged sphere with negatively charged electrons moving about inside. Two of Rutherford's workers, Geiger and Marsden, found that several alpha particles bounced back 
from a thin foil of metal when many alpha particles were allowed to hit the foil. To explain this, Rutherford assumed that the entire positive charge of the atom is concentrated in a very small nucleus and that the electrons occupy the space outside the nucleus. In a separate video, I'll talk more about this experiment. This was a revolutionary idea in 1911. The greatest change in our concept of matter since the time of the ancient Greeks. Rutherford's nuclear theory provided the basis for the new science of nuclear physics. In 1912, Niels Bohr, the great Danish physicist, joined Rutherford and put forward the Bohr model of the atom, thus obtaining general acceptance of the nuclear atom. In 1914, the Great War began, and the research group was dispersed. After a period away from Manchester, Rutherford returned to academic research in his empty laboratory and began his third period of discovery. By 1918, he was certain that he could show experimentally the artificial transmutation of nitrogen, changing nitrogen nuclei into another type of nucleus. By 1919, Rutherford had become Cavendish Professor at Cambridge and he rapidly confirmed the artificial transmutation of nitrogen. Alpha particles from polonium were allowed to pass through nitrogen gas. When one struck a nitrogen nucleus, a hydrogen nucleus was ejected and an oxygen nucleus formed. In 1920, he named the hydrogen nucleus a proton. And although he did a great deal of research work, he found himself getting more involved in the administration and organization of research. The Cavendish grew in size and reputation under his leadership, but the discoveries were now made by the people under him, aided by his interest and enthusiasm. Rutherford served as president of the Royal Society from 1925 to 1930, and in 1931 his greatest achievement was recognised when he became Baron Rutherford of Nelson. Active in science to the end, Rutherford died after a brief illness in October 1937 and was buried in Westminster Abbey.